Good morning and welcome again to another one of our Sunday School lessons. Today's lesson's title is Trials and Denials. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, O oh God. We thank you that we can come one more time to study thy word. We pray, O oh God, that you open our hearts to receive thy word. Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you remove self and you use me, O oh God, as a willing vessel to teach thy word and for us to learn what does see the Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray and thank you. Let us say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. As I said earlier, our lesson title today is Trials and Denial. The lesson text comes from John chapter 18, reading from verses 15 through 27. When you find it, please say amen. amen. Let us read. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I not, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answered thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Cyphus, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou another also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose heir Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Our golden text for today comes from Mark chapter 14, verses 6 to 2. Unlike other Sunday school lessons that we have taught, the golden text usually comes from within that lesson. But this is a special lesson. This trial and denial, this lesson about um, Jesus' trial and Peter's denial, there are four accounts, and all four of these accounts are in the um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So our golden text comes from Mark. It reads, Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Today's aim, the facts, to examine how Jesus is tried by the high priest while Peter denies knowing him. Our principle for today is to recognize Christ 
faithfulness in a situation where men were unfaithful. And the application is to always turn to Christ when others turn away, knowing that he is always faithful. The old focus of the religious leaders in Jerusalem was on putting Jesus to death. In last week's lesson, we learned about Christ's arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. And this week's lesson continues, or it picks up from last week's lesson. When Judas Iscariot and the soldiers and the other officers of the Jews came to arrest Jesus, we remembered that Jesus asked them, who do they seek? They did not realize that that was Jesus. He said, I am he whom you seek. Mm -hmm. And with them hearing that, they all fell backward. And then he asked the question again, whom do you seek? Mm -hmm. So in this week's lesson, at, at that time, after he asked the second time, the soldiers, they came and they bound Jesus and they took him to the high priest. The high priest that they took Jesus to was Anais. Anais was not the current high priest, but he was a former high priest. And he was the father-in-law, as we will see, of the current high priest. Okay. So when they arrested Jesus, he told them to let his disciples go. All of the other disciples, with the exception of Peter, followed him from a distance. And the lesson stated that another disciple was there also. In the first denial that Peter did, the Peter's first denial of Jesus, it says, when Jesus was taken to Annas, Peter and another disciple, no one really knew who this other disciple is, but the writer says it could have been John, the one who wrote this um, account. Then it says, the girl who stood watch at the door saw Peter and immediately voiced her suspicion that he too was a follower of Jesus. As Christians, even though we are in the world, we know that we are not of this world once we have accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. But there is something about us that the people in the world will know that we are different from them. In this case, this girl, she had a suspicion. And the second part of the lesson, it says, Jesus before the high priest. The high priest mentioned here was Annas, who was actually the former high priest and the father-in-law of the current high priest, as I said before. The high priest expressed interest in Jesus' disciples and what he had been teaching them. Not only did he express interest in what he was teaching his disciples, he would also express interest in the doctrine of what Jesus was teaching. Here we see that he taught that Jesus was trying to teach his, his disciples sorry, to rebel against the Roman authority. But as we know from the lesson, that was not the case. But any time there is a reason for us to say that we are a part of Christ's body, we need to always seize that opportunity to say that we are a part of Christ's body. We should not, like Peter, try to deny Christ. Um, and I was probably interested in knowing whether they had been training for a sedition against the Roman authority. Regarding doctrine, he was trying to get Jesus' teaching on the record for the purpose of twisting his word to condemn him. The charge in this case would have been blasphemy. 
Jesus explained that he spoke openly to everyone in the synagogue throughout Galilee and Judea. You can read the other part of um, Jesus before the high priest, but right now I'm going to go into teaching of the lesson. The first part, it says Peter's first denial, and it says trying to follow. When Jesus was seized in the garden, the disciples fled into the night. But true to his bold nature, though cautiously, Peter followed afar off that is, at a distance, to see what was going to happen. While we cannot be certain, most think that the reference to another disciple was to none other than the author of this gospel, the Apostle John. Whether it was another disciple or John, he was known to the high priest. So, in verses 15 and 16, When we look at the I'm going to be jumping around. When we look at the practical points, the first one says the Lord can use earthly connections to place us where he wants us. Mm -hmm. And here this other disciple in this lesson was the other connection that God can use to place us where he wants us. He was the one that was able to go in with Jesus, but Peter was not able to go in. This same disciples that went in with Jesus, the one that knew the high priest or had some kind of connection with the high priest, was able to come out and um, get Peter not only to be where he was, but also to come in. When Peter came in, the woman that was at the door referred to her as a damsel. She asked Peter if he was one of Jesus' disciples. This is the first time that Peter denied Christ. He said, I am not. So it says here, standing in that is when Peter said to the damsel that he was not part of Jesus' disciples. As I continue to study the lesson, it said that Peter was likely trying to blend in with those present and therefore stood close to them. A lot of times when push comes to shove according to the lesson, we as Christians when it's time for us to stand up for our beliefs in Christ, we tend to, like Peter, blend in with the world. Mm -hmm. But here is a good lesson for us to learn that blending in is not always the key. Amen. Because when we blend in, we tend to deny the one who died on Calvary's cross for our sins. It says here, that he blended with those present and he therefore stood close to them and that this decision would eventually set him up to again be challenged about knowing Jesus leading to his further denials of him. So before we go into other denials, the other two denials of Peter, let us look at Jesus' first trial. Interrogation and reply. Jesus' first hearing was before Annas, the former high priest and father-in-law of Caiaphas, the current high priest. Annas questioned Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. In response to the high priest's inquiry about his teaching, Jesus boldly referred him to what he had taught openly in public places of worship both in synagogue as well as in Jerusalem temple. Okay. When Annas asked Jesus about his doctrine, he did not try to say or to answer in a direct manner. The way Jesus answered, as we can see, Jesus said, 
in his early ministry, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So when Alice asked him about his disciples and about his doctrine, had he said what he had taught, that means he would have been bearing witness of himself. So that is why he said to Annas to ask those who were there when he taught them. He did not teach, you know, he did not hide to teach the word of God. It was taught openly at both the temples and at the synagogue. And the way that Jesus answered the high priest, one of the officers that was present there slapped Jesus in the face. So Jesus, they said, honest challenge. Jesus, in response to this abuse, Jesus challenged his attacker to give a valid reason for the attack. Since Jesus had said nothing evil and had meant no disrespect to the office of the high priest, why had the officer struck him? It says that Jesus was innocent of all wrongdoing, and the officer's reaction was unwarranted. This was just one of many violations of the law that occurred during the trials of Jesus. After Jesus answered in that manner, Annas decided to send Jesus to his son-in-law, Caiaphas. And Caiaphas was the current high priest. Concerning Jesus' trial before Caiaphas, the other gospel gave considerable detail. Peter's further denial. This is the second time that Peter is going to deny Christ. Earlier on in John, we remember that Peter, that Jesus told Peter that before the cock crows, that he was going to deny him three times. And knowing Peter as we do, Peter was always the bold one. He will be the one to speak up. It was this same Peter that pulled his sword in the garden and struck the ear of one of the high priest servants. So Simon Peter was still warming himself at the fire along with some servants and soldiers. Someone asked him, Art not thou also one of his disciples, as he had done previously? Peter denied Jesus by asserting, I am not. This was the second time since Jesus' arrest that Peter had denied him publicly. Peter has pledged his loyalty to Jesus, even if it meant, that, even if it meant his own death. But when he was actually faced with owning his loyalty to Christ, before those who could have arrested and punished along with his master, his courage failed. Mm -hmm. And this is a very good lesson for us today. Because if we're saying that we are children of Christ, whenever we're in a situation in which we have to stand up for Christ, we need to do so. Amen. Because I know in the Bible it says that if we lose our life for his sake, we're going to gain him, gain it in the end. Okay. This is a humbling lesson for anyone who relies on his own self-confidence in the Christian life. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, Paul warns us, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. It is only through the grace and power of the Holy Spirit that we can persevere in our faithfulness to Christ. So here we see that without the Holy Spirit, we cannot persevere in, in our faithfulness to Christ. And it says that resisting such temptation is not easy. But the Peter we see here is a stark contrast to the Peter we see in Acts 2, 14 and 40. Mm -hmm. It says that after the Holy Spirit had come to dwell in the church and in the hearts of every believer, Peter was emboldened to stand up 
and intrepidly proclaimed the gospel in the very heart of Jerusalem. His preaching pierced the hearts of his listeners, compelling them to beg him to tell them what they needed to do to be saved. Even after the most dismal failure, there is yet hope of, vic of great victory if we endure in faith and reliance on God's grace. And then the second, the third denial of Peter knowing Christ was when a king of Malchus, the guys in the garden, the um, high priest servant name was Malchus, a cousin of his asked Peter again if he was a disciple of Jesus. And Peter denied for the third time. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the cock crew. Mm -hmm. It says here, of note is the fact that Peter actually backed up his denials with cursing and swearing. Those present also recognize him as a Galilean because of his accent, which differ from those from Judea. Talking about accent, I know that I have one. And sometimes you open, I open my mouth and the first thing sometimes people will say, are you from Jamaica? Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of people know about the Jamaican accent, but I always say, no, I'm not from Jamaica. Some of them I'll tell them where I'm from, but others I'll just say, no, I'm not from Jamaica. <laughs> anyway, because Peter started to curse and to swear, the way he sounded, it wasn't like the people he was around. So they knew there and then also that Peter was definitely one of Jesus' disciples. It says, it went on to say that talking about Jesus invariably makes worldly people uncomfortable. Sometimes it makes them upset or even angry and belligerent. And an example that they give here is, say for example, you know you have a lot of people in sports or in um, certain different arts and so on, you know, they always give thanks to God and, you know, they will talk about God and so on. And the ones that, asking them if they're of the world, they try, you know, very quickly to, you know, say something else, but not in that direction. You know, like they're trying to praise God or thank God for what he has done for them. So um, it says here that we must therefore be ever vigilant concerning temptations to deny Christ that are continually before us in the world. Concerning Satan's trick, Paul declares, we are not ignorant of his devices, but bold reliance on the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us will give us courage to represent Christ as faithful ambassadors. As John wrote to the readers of his first epistle, he says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And we need to remember that. Okay, any questions, concerns? No? Okay, let us go to the practical points. Practical point number one. The Lord can use earthly connections to place us where he wants us. Mm -hmm. As we see that, the other disciple was the earthly connection that was used to place Peter where you wanted Peter to be. Practical point number two, a focus on our own comfort can keep us from testifying to others about our relationship with Jesus. Here we see when Peter denied Christ, Peter, had he said he was a disciple of Jesus Christ, maybe he was thinking that they would have done the same thing that they were doing to Christ. They were, they were going to harm him also. 
Practical point number three. Integrity means doing and saying the right thing at all times. And that's the very quality, whether you're Christian or not, we all should have integrity. Practical point number four. Truthfulness is the best policy, but it is not always appreciated. This, like when Jesus answered Annas, that, you know, he told him that to ask the other to whom he taught or those who were present when he did his teaching, even though he was telling the truth, the officer thought that Jesus was being disrespectful to the high priest. Practical point number five. People who are out to destroy God's work will persist in their opposition. My sisters, this is quite true. Anytime we're trying to do something for Christ, we will always have opposition. I think this time to encourage you not to give up, because as I said before, God's word will not return to him for him. And finally, practical point number six, denying Jesus is another way of betraying him. And that's exactly what Peter did. Even though Peter denied Christ, we're gonna see that that denial Christ did not fault Peter for that denial. He knew exactly that Peter was going to deny him. That is why he said to him that you were going to deny me three times before the cock crow. So Peter's action in future lessons, we're going to learn more about that. Before I go into prayer, do we have any questions, concerns, or anything? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for thy word. We thank you, O oh God, that we have learned that there will be trials in our lives. And if we stay focused on you, O oh God, and to be faithful to you, O oh God, just as you were, regardless of trials or tribulations, we are going to see you in the end. We thank you, O oh God, for thy word. We pray, O oh God, that we can go out and teach others about your grace and your mercy. And if any Father, as we return to our homes, we ask, O oh God, that you take us there safely. And please continue to guide, God, and protect us through all the course of the day. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Let us say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.